Hello friends, this is my first video I am posting on YouTube and I have created a channel SK Sharma's Food Tech Classes. So beginning with the purpose and the definitions of the subject, we today will discuss the concepts of food science, food technology, processing and preservation. These are the terms which have been used by so many of people. We also use these terms so often, but many times we are confused what we actually want to say. So for this purpose, the definitions, the concepts of food science, food technology, preservation and processing, so they have to be clear. Beginning with food science, what is food science? Food science is a discipline that covers different aspects of biological sciences, the physical sciences, the engineering sciences, the chemistry, all these. In order to study the preparation of different products, the storage of different products, the packaging of different products, blending of different products, milling of different uh, grains and so on, so, so, so on, so on and on. So this encompasses the explanation, the logical explanation of the concepts of science, engineering, physics, microbiology, chemistry in order to answer all the questions related to what happens how, what happens where, what happens when. So this is what is dealt with in the subject of food science. As far as food technology is concerned, technology is the application of science. So, how to prepare a particular product, how to go for milling of different grains, how to prepare different beverages, how to prepare dairy products, so and so on. To my students, I often give this example that if we fall ill, we go to a doctor. The doctor prescribes us some medicines and he says you take three tablets a day with cold water. We come back and take the medicines as such and after three days time we find that our fever is gone. So my question is that what did the doctor give to me? The doctor gave the technology how to get rid of fever. So the technology contained consuming specific number of medicines in a specific way for a specific duration of time and with the given technology I am able to get rid of my fever. So that is what is technology. But as a user of this technology I don't know what that particular medicine has done into my system. What it has actually done where it has actually acted, what type of physiological reactions it has affected. So this is explained by science. So I think this with this shifting to the examples of food science and technology. See, take an example how to prepare a jam. So preparation of a jam, that getting the ingredients, getting a definite quantity of pulp, adding sugar to it, heating to a particular consistency, adding some acid, adding some pectin and then packing it in a glass jar. So this is the technology. But the science speaks that what will happen if I heat a fruit pulp to a particular temperature? What type of changes in the chemical composition will occur when I heat it? What happens when I add pectin, why do I add pectin? What type of networking is formed by addition of pectin? Why the addition of citric acid is required? How the conversion of sucrose into glucose and fructose will take place? What will happen if the quantity of added sugar is more? What will happen if I add less quantity of sugar? So that is what is explained. The logical explanation of what is happening during a particular fruit processing operation so that is explained in case of science. So science is the logical reasoning, technology is how to do it. Science is the concept, the, the reasons why a particular thing happens and 
technology is how to do it science is for academician for a researcher technology is for the industry technology is for the end user so that's how the food science and food technology they may differ coming on to another aspect that is food processing and then food preservation and often these two terms also are also confused people often they confuse these two terms and they use them synonymously but the point is that food processing is any deliberate alteration to the composition to the shape to the form to the nature of the product in order to improve its shape size structure storability palate aroma and nutritive value therapeutic potential and so and so on so this is what is done in case of food processing but it has to be a deliberate operation on the other hand if i say food preservation so food preservation will only deal with the reduction of spoilage reduction of spoilage how i am going to preserve my food means how i am going to reduce the spoilage and that is what is dealt with in case of food preservation so in a way i can say that food preservation is one small section of the food processing if i simply take a fruit in my hands and rub it clean it on the surface so it becomes it adds value the fruit now shines so somehow its value has increased and this is processing but in no way by doing this i have increased the shelf life i have increased the storability so that is what happens when i preserve it so for the purpose of preservation i have to alter it in a way that it increases its storability it reduces the spoilage maybe in fresh form or maybe in processed form so that will come maybe for the short term storage for the long term storage now going further into processing as i said that processing is any deliberate alteration now to what extent you are going to alter it to what extent you are going to change it so that is what is dealt in food processing if you do the alteration in a way that it is not going to affect the shape size form of the material that comes into the category of primary processing and if we go further that the shape size form alters but still the commodity is not in a position to be consumed by the consumer that is what is called as secondary processing and when the alteration is to the extreme and that the actual shape size form everything changes that is called as tertiary process so in primary processing where we are not at all modifying the shape size form so the operations of cleaning grading sorting washing dusting so all of these operations they may come up in the primary processing area into the definition of secondary processing when the, the shape changes form changes but still the commodity is not usable say for example i take apple i convert into apple pulp but i cannot eat apple pulp it has to be converted into jam it has to be converted into some product so that is apple pulp will be a secondary process product similarly i take wheat i convert into wheat grains or sorry wheat flour so that wheat flour will be a secondary process product but i cannot still eat wheat flour so that is a secondary process product now tertiary processing when that pulp is converted into jam so jam will be a tertiary process product similarly if that wheat flour is converted into some bread some biscuits so that is a tertiary process product so overall the primary processing does not bring about any changes in the shape size form secondary processing brings about change changes in the shape size form to the extent where it is still not consumable but tertiary processing brings about so much changes that its actual shape size form everything is changing so that's all for today we'll meet in the next lecture which will be on principles of food preservation thank you very much